Thank you, Eric, and everyone. Water is life. Unpolluted agricultural land is life. Clean air is life. These three are threatened with permanent destruction by fracking. And we don't need the shale gas. Efficiency and renewables could solve the problem. It has been estimated up to 90 to 95 percent by 2030 if all sectors got behind this effort. We're here in this magnificent cathedral, home for people of all religions or none. I stand before you as mother, citizen, and Christian with moral responsibility to care for God's creation. And you are so important because you are responding. And by banning fracking, we are also saving life on this very planet. And this awakening that we're feeling in so many people as we come to this place where we realize there can be a better future for our children and their children and the children to come. Across the state, I've met over the past two years in organizing our campaign and our team, people that are deeply dedicated to what we love. This love is not just a sympathetic or sentimental love. This love is a fierce love that drives our movement. It drives everyone here and everyone across the state that works on this once a week, twice a week, every day, in their sleep, to maintain and protect our water, our air, our mountains, our children, our grandchildren, our families, our friends, our communities. That's what drives our movement, and that is why we are going to win. to you by the folks at Food and Water Watch. So you guys are rock, Food and Water Watch rocks. Look what they've done here today. They put something together that's very extraordinary. I've got some friends that I wanted to come up. Hey guys, come on up, come on, bring that, bring that up too. Anybody else, want, if you want to bring, that thing's absolutely amazing. If you want to come up here with that. And we got a group of kids here. Um, so really what this is, is this is a reflection of you, okay? First, for those of you that are atheists or agnostic, bear with me, but God bless you guys. Um, we've got a fight on our hands here, uh, and it is one of a spiritual nature, and this is one that we're going to win. And they, and they no longer have oil to drill. So this is their new product line. And this is how they're going to extend their life for the next 20 to 30 years. Because the bottom line is, they know they're obsolete when we start plugging in our electric vehicles into our solar panels, that we don't need them anymore. And I'll tell you, that's gonna be a good day because we're, not get, we're gonna see the rates of cancer lessen. We're going to see people living longer lives. We're not going to see 3,000 people dying each year because of air pollution in New York City. We won't see these health impacts. And we'll be free from corporations deciding our energy policy, which is what they're currently doing. Yeah. Wholesale destruction of a substantial portion of the Earth's crust Getting a relatively small amount of energy out of the earth is not our energy future. I'm very proud to be here today in this packed house to talk about the environment of this state, the environment of this city, quite frankly, our environment in the United States. 
This issue is now today the number one issue that we face in terms of preserving our Earth for the next generation on this planet. And hydrofracking will take us back to a dark ages when oil and gas companies thought that they could set the tone and the standard for what's possible in this country. We are the ones who must set the environmental agenda. When this movement was just really getting started and we were starting to create some real hope and possibility, we decided in my office to take a look at what was happening around the country with all these so-called hydrofracking accidents. And what we found was very disturbing. We found streams being blown up. We found faucets and houses going up. We started to ask questions and we said, what is actually going on? Why are companies like Halliburton extracting gas at great damage to our environment and our communities? And we were told that some of the science that they were using, well, they couldn't Thank tell us so exactly what they were doing to our earth because they said, look, it's like the Big Mac special sauce. We can't tell people what's going on. And for a while, our federal government said, well, that made a lot of sense. But it took activists and environmentalists from around the country to step up and say, we're not going to let them do this. We're not going to let them get away with this. We're going to work in state houses across the country. We're going to work around Washington, D.C. We're going to build an environmental movement the likes we've never seen. And today in New York State, this is where we draw the line in the sand. It is not safe to use hydrofracking. It is not right to use hydrofracking. We should not give away our earth to people who are just speculators and are playing the market with our lives. This is our movement today. Well, there is this erroneous belief out there that communities of color are not interested in environmental issues, key environmental issues like fracking. To those that say that, I say, frack no. In fact, communities of color have been subjected to environmental injustice for many, many years. We deeply understand what dumping is about because asthma rates are going through the roof. The quality of our environment, our air, is terrible, disproportionately worse than many communities across the state and across the United States. So we are deeply connected to what the issues of environmental justice are. And that's why I say that fracking is right in the center of our environmental agenda. We are not disconnected. We say, frack no. We are connected to this anti-fracking movement. Very much so. Because here we are on the verge of allowing the most dangerous environmental practice in New York State in a hundred years. When people say the proponents of hydrofracking, we want hydrofracking, what do we respond back? No fracking way. I want to hear that from you. No fracking way. And unfortunately, there are politicians in Albany who believe hydrofracking is the cure-all to the economy. Those same people, if you talk to them up in Albany, refuse to believe there's a problem with global warming. These people have a different sense of reality. We have to let them know we're not going to allow this in our state. You have to do that. The way we're going to win this battle is a real grassroots effort. We can win if you get involved. But you have to leave here with the mission to call every Republican state senator in Albany, because that's where the battle is really now. You have to leave here and call the governor's office, because that's where the battle is. All of you have been like an earthquake.
Together, you submitted more than 70,000 comments to the DEC on the draft ge supplemental generic environmental impact statement. And I'm so happy that I'm there at a moment in time when it is necessary to galvanize all of the progressive, fair-minded people in this state to come together to ban fracking. These people are extremely persistent. We thought we were ahead in the Delaware River Basin. There may be new challenges coming to the Delaware River Basin soon. We think we're ahead in New York. There is a constant drumbeat of come back in and come back in. And Governor Cuomo, as many of our hopes are pinned to him, he still won't be the governor forever. But my point here is that we don't ban fracking unless we replace it. We don't ban fracking unless we create renewable energy and a sustainable energy economy. To go back to your buildings, to your co-op boards, or to your representatives, you say, we don't want natural gas burners, we want renewable energy in our buildings. We don't want a natural gas power plant or a pipeline, we want to build offshore wind. We want to build community solar. We want electric cars in New York City. Thanks, Eric, and, and thanks so much, Food and Water Watch, for hosting this incredible event in this amazing space. Thank you so much. This is amazing. And hopefully today, in this truly majestic space, our voices will not just echo in these halls, but up to Albany and across the world. As several other people have already said, people across the world are looking to us in New York State, looking to see if we will allow our elected leaders to persist in their belief that what happened everywhere else somehow, miraculously, will not happen here. Will we have the hubris to think we can address this Pandora's box of devastating impacts. We're only just starting to understand this issue of the radon that's actually in the gas itself. So even if you could frack safely somehow, what would happen if millions of people in New York City turn on their kitchen stoves and get a dose of radon in these poorly ventilated city kitchens? Uh, just another reason that we're starting to learn that fracking is unsafe. And of course, we, we often talk a lot about safety with this issue, uh, which naturally leads to questions of numbers and percentages and ratios and questions of risk versus reward. I think we actually need to start talking about accountability. It's not acceptable for one family to have to deal with water contamination as a result of fracking. And if this, if this industry is so safe, why won't it clean up its messes? Why don't we see the Marcella Shale Coalition rushing to join us in our demand for justice for the people in Dimmick? Why don't we see ExxonMobil decide not to air their commercials one time and supply water to the families of Carter Road for a year? We know the truth. This industry could not operate profitably if they fairly compensated the victims, as if you could ever even make up for that kind of devastation. We know this industry cannot operate without breaking the law, without waging a war on science and the truth, and silencing the people whose lives they destroy. Not one family should have to go through what the families of Carter Road have gone through. And we will not let one family in New York have to go through that. And we will also not be silent when President Obama joins T. Boone Pickens in selling us the tall tale that natural gas is a clean, green miracle fuel. As Bill McKibben just said, natural gas is only a bridge to an inhospitable, uninhabitable planet. And I think it's worth mentioning that it would cost us $700 billion to make that so-called easy transition to natural gas. What could we do with that money for renewables? We know that it's high time to demand what's necessary, that we invest our money as taxpayers and as consumers 
to create a truly renewable, sustainable economy. And we know that the energy solutions are here now. We could get to 100% renewable energy by 2030 if we only had the political will. And we're going to start right here in New York by banning fracking. Folks, one measure of the growing power of our movement is the tremendous number of organizations and individuals that were involved in supporting and promoting this rally. Please join me in recognizing all 42 of them as I read their names. Brecht Forum, Broadway Democrats, Brooklyn Food Coalition, Catskill Citizens for Safe Energy, Catskill Mountain Keeper, Chefs for the Marsalis, Citizen Action of New York, Citizens Campaign for the Environment, Center for Health, Environment, and Justice, Community Democrats, Councilwoman Gail Brewer, Croton Watershed Clean Water Coalition, Democracy for America, Democracy for New York, Food and Water Watch, Food Sustainability Club at Brooklyn College, Fourth Street Co-op, Frack Action, Grassroots Environmental Education, Green Party of New York, Infraction, Light Alliance Foundation, New York Interfaith Power and Light, New Yorkers for Clean Water, New York Prisoners Against Gas Drilling, No Food New York, NY Contra El Paso Ducto, New York City Friends of Clearwater, NYH2O, Occupy Wall Street by Mount Working Group, Park Slope Food Co-op, Reach Out America, Sane Energy Project, Sierra Club Atlantic Chapter, Slow Food New York City, State Senator Adrian Espion, Sustainability Club at the Borough 